Hello and welcome to week two of my extreme budget challenge. I'm going to show you what I picked up today to help get us through the week. If you want to know what I have left, I always do a um, inventory the night before. So that's on the previous video or day seven. So anyway, I picked up a couple of bananas and an onion. Uh, luckily, we're getting some very nice rain today, so I should be able to get some lettuce for uh, vegetables this week and the few things that are growing in the garden. I picked up a small sour cream, a roll of turkey breakfast sausage, and this is a pretty good deal. It's two ten for the pound of the uh, turkey sausage. They also have an Italian sausage for the same price. I picked up a roll of ground beef. The guys were asking for some hamburgers. This k kills me. It was $4.84. But you know what? Sometimes when you get asked to do something and you find a way to do it, you do it. So those are the two main protein sources as well as I picked up a jar of peanut butter. We prefer creamy, but it was out of stock. This was $1.74. I picked up another block of mozzarella cheese because we like to have pizza once a week. One box of elbow noodles. Yes, I do make the most of my own noodles, but I, I needed some convenience this week for a couple of recipes um, because I can't make elbows. I can make flat noodles. And then I picked up a tomato paste. So that was my haul from Walmart which totaled $14.26. Then I went to the Dollar Tree and I picked up a um, bag of pretzels. These are good, these are good pretzels actually. Um, we need it, we're gonna eat a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or whatever this week. So kind of wanted something, a snack type food because you know, even when you're on an extreme budget, sometimes you just need something a little extra that makes you feel better about being on such a terrible budget. So anyway, there's my snacks that can go with sandwiches and such. And Walmart eggs doubled in price since last week. So I went to Dollar Tree, price theirs. You get six for a dollar twenty-five. Remember, I'm using my own eggs because my chickens give me, you know, I get almost between 8 and 12 a day. So I'm not going to spend my money buying somebody else's eggs when I know I can walk out to my chicken coop. And then I had three left over from last week. So I'm starting the week with nine eggs. So that was the total for, and that was of course $2.50. So my total today was $16.76. The other thing I did was I purchased these chicken thighs. I do not plan on using them this week. They're going to go in the freezer. This is for week three. They are kind of hit and miss in my area to get any kind of decent chicken. So when I see it, I have to buy it then because next week it may not be there. Tomorrow it may not be there. There was only two packs of these left. So these were $10.95 and I did deduct that from my remaining balance. So for the next, for the following week three and four, I have $28.09 left. So, so far we're doing well. If I need anything odd in the middle of the week, or say I run out of flour, I can take that out of that $28. But this is going in the freezer, and I will include this in next week's totals because I did not include it in this week's totals. Today for lunch, I am going to have some peanut butter toast, pretzels and I'm going to munch on some of my berries. Now it's 1.30 in the afternoon. I had a very early meeting this morning. I had a piece of toast and jelly before I went to the store today. Then I had my meeting, had to go to Walmart, Dollar Tree, stop and pick up my cat's medication. So that's why it's 1.30 and I'm hungry today. So this is what I'm going to have for my lunch. All right, I had my lunch and now I'm back. And there's a couple things I need to meal prep for tonight. So right now I'm going to show you how to make a super quick, super easy mayonnaise. I don't know about you, but our mayonnaise 
for not even the name brand is over five dollars so i'm going to make it for a couple of pennies in here i have one egg yolk that i reserved from a couple of days ago to that i'm going to add just a dash of salt gives you know salt gives things flavor i don't use a lot because like i have mentioned repeatedly I kind of like to salt things at the table because I don't like as much salt as most people then I'm going to add two teaspoons of vinegar now you can use white vinegar champagne vinegar whatever you have or lemon juice I prefer it with the lemon juice I don't have any so I'm going to use my apple cider vinegar my second choice would be regular white vinegar but it is what it is so and what I'm using it for won't hurt all right so I have my vinegar I have my egg I have some salt the next thing I'm going to add is some mustard I'm going to use my once again my spicy brown mustard mustard adds some flavor and it helps things to emulsify yeah about a teaspoon more or less again the recipe I'm using later I'm going to make some potato salad with it so it won't hurt. And then last but not least, three quarters of a cup of a neutral flavored oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, avocado oil, whatever. What makes this nice is using an immersion blender. Now I picked this one up with a bunch of attachments like a little mini food chopper and a whisk and a milk frother thing for like 15 bucks off of Amazon so they're not real expensive so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply put this in my mixture and I'm just going to turn it on <laughs> Now, it's going to be a funny color between the apple cider vinegar and the, you can see it got already, it's thick and creamy. And I just got to get it off my immersion blender. It takes like two minutes to make, you know. Measure out your ingredients, stick it in the jar. I'm going to scrape that off a little better in a minute. And I have some nice creamy mayonnaise ready to go. That's it. So all I have in here basically is a little bit of vinegar, which costs maybe a penny, and an egg white, I mean egg yolk, some oil, a little bit of salt, and there's my mayonnaise. It's not creamy white because of the mustard and the more so the apple cider vinegar. But anyway, there you go. Quick, easy, fast mayonnaise. The next thing I'm going to mix up here is a real simple... Um, potato salad with that mayonnaise. I'm just going to come over here and chop my egg and I'm going to add, I found some celery out in the garden. I don't use too much. My brother doesn't like it. And I have some of the frozen onion left over. I don't put too much because it upsets my stomach. I have a few chives. I like it for the color. My brother doesn't because it's green in my egg that I chopped up pretty good. I'm going to do a dash of garlic powder. And then I'm going to mix in my mayonnaise. I'm going to tell you my secret weapon. People love my deviled eggs. And my, I'm going to try to reserve a little bit for the burgers. They love my deviled eggs. They love my potato salad. Add a touch of horseradish. It gives it a little bit of zing that nobody kind of knows what it is, but it's so good. So I'm going to see. I might have. I do. I have some horsey sauce from Arby's. My, it just does add something to it. I don't know how horseradish can go wrong. Add as much or as little as you like. I, I kind of like it pretty. Ooh, that was strong. 
tasted it before I put it in there. It's got a good zing to it. Yeah, I could use a little bit more mayonnaise, but I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. You could add some mustard to it, Dijon. I had some in the mayonnaise, a pretty decent amount. But before you finish it off, always taste it because you probably need salt and pepper. Definitely need salt and pepper. And, you know, paprika if you like it. Add what you guys like. Do you like pickles in it? Do you, I don't know, peppers. Uh, you could add whatever your family likes in them. But that's going to be part of our dinner tonight. So that'll make our side dish anyway. I'm going to start my next recipe which is going to be some hamburger buns. Um, this is a small batch. This makes four really big ones. I mean pretty good size ones. I started out with one and three quarter cups of flour. To that I'm going to add in one teaspoon of my yeast which I almost forgot about on my I did forget about it on my review of what I had left. So I have a teaspoon of my yeast. I'm going to add one tablespoon of sugar. Tablespoon of sugar. And I'm going to add, what I do is, if, you, if your salt touches your yeast, you can kill it. So I kind of mix this up a bit. So it's not all going to get any salt on it. And then I'm going to add in oh, roughly a half a teaspoon or so of salt. You could go a little more if you want, but I'm going to do about a half a teaspoon or so. Okay, so I have all of my dry ingredients lightly mixed up. To that, I'm going to add a tablespoon of melted butter, or in this case, margarine. And the last ingredient. Now you can add an egg if you would like. This is a half batch, so use you know use your egg yolk or egg white if you want. And the last item is going to be water. Water depends on how you measure your flour, how humid it is, um, you know, a lot of different variables. So always start with a lot less than you think you need. So you need somewhere up to a half a cup. Might be a little more, depends on how you measured it. So I'm going to go with roughly a quarter cup just to get it kind of started. Gives you an idea, you know, how you're doing. If it doesn't come together at all, you know, add some more. So I'm going to continue to add my water until I think I'm pretty close. And then you have to get your hands dirty. And you just got to go in and do it. So I'm going to make sure this comes together really well by adding enough water that once I turn it out, I can continue to knead it on. Whoop, that might be a bit. So I may need to add flour to it. Who knows? And you can do that in the kneading process. You don't have to worry too much right here. So basically, I got all my dough up. I set this bowl aside because I'm going to knead it after to proof it. I'm going to flour my counter really well. And then I'm just going to bring my dough together first. Make sure, you can see it's a little bit wet now because I added a little bit too much water. That's okay. It's easier to add more flour later than it is to try to add water later because it's too, it's too dry. So. So I'm going to go ahead and just knead this together really well. And it takes time. You know, kneading by hand takes time. If you're in your stand mixer, you know, four minutes, five minutes. By hand, you want to knead it up to ten minutes. It depends on where your dough is at. And you want it to see how it's kind of rough looking and got a lot of potholes in it or whatever you want to call it. That is not going to make nice, smooth dough. Now the, the consistency is pretty good here. 
I'm going to continue to knead it, and I'm going to show you what it's going to look like once you've kneaded it well enough. All right, this is about five to six minutes of kneading. You can see it has gotten nice and smooth. You could feel the difference in the dough. It's really smooth. The feel, the feel is different. You, you'll, you'll learn that feel once you get going. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this in an oiled bowl, and you're going to let it rise till it's doubled in size. It may take a half hour. It may take an hour. It's going to depend on what your temperature is and where you have it. When I come back, we will go ahead and shape the buns, which you let rise a second time. Sorry, guys, I had a camera glitch. But anyway, I took my dough and I divided it into four pieces. Then what I do is I roll them in a ball, trying not to squish all the air out. And then you flatten them down so that you don't end up with a big hill in your bun. You want them to kind of rise so that when you cut them in half, it's closer to a hamburger bun. Um, if you have used the, say, egg white inside, you could brush it with egg yolk or vice versa on top. You could sprinkle it with um, sesame seeds. I've done um, caramelized onions before I baked them. Everything bagel seasoning would be good. So remember, just because we're eating on a budget doesn't have to be boring. So make it your own, add what your family likes, and enjoy your meal. Okay, you guys, I apologize. When I was starting to edit this video, I realized I forgot to tell you, or I missed it, or my camera's being weird. Anyway, um, I baked these in my toaster oven at 350 degrees. My toaster oven cooks a little bit faster than my oven, so these took 13 minutes. Usually 13 to 18 really depends on your oven and how it keeps temperature. My oven tends to be cooler than my toaster oven. So anyway, I wanted you to see when they were done. They have a little bit of a firm texture, okay? So if you're not used to that, let them sit overnight and they'll be just like a regular burger bun. And then you just slice them in half and go ahead and have them with your dinner. All right, I wiped up my bowl, I put my ground beef in there, and what I'm going to do is I call it a sort of meatloaf type mix. I go through my refrigerator, I find little bits of things that I might need to use up, something that can flavor them, something that can bulk it out a little bit. So anyway, I have the meat in here, I have a little bit of celery, I want to get that gr finer, finer in my little grinder, and I have a little piece of that zucchini, I found another one that didn't get pollinated. And I have some onion back here. I took a piece of bread, and I only have a few crumbs in here. You don't want to make this dry, but you want it to be to the point where, um, you know, if there's some moisture in it. I'll tell you what, if you have mushrooms and add a few to your burgers, especially if you have that super lean stuff, they will be so moist, you won't believe it. I'm using some more of that frozen onion that I had. And I'm going to use, this is part of my little, um, what do you call it, stick blender. One I picked up for like 15 bucks. And I'm going to blend that up for just a minute here. All right, a little grind. There isn't much I'm putting in here right now, but I can always add more. I really, really like to bulk it out using mushrooms. So I'm going to... Put this mixture in there. I'm not going to use an egg. You can if you want, just like you do on meatloaf. But I don't have a whole lot this week to use. And it looks like I could stand some more breadcrumbs. If it gets too um, dry, you can add some water to it. And then you just kind of see how it goes. Because I have another item that will add some moisture to these. And honestly, you don't taste... You taste flavor. You don't taste this weird stuff I'm putting in there. So my hand, one hand is dirty and one hand is clean. I'm going to add some garlic powder. I'm going to add some salt. And after I wipe my hands, I'll add a grind of pepper here. But I found, look at, I saved it from dinner last night. It's a tiny, what is that, two tablespoons, two, three tablespoons of mashed potatoes left over from dinner. This adds the moisture and it's going to help it bind together. Okay, so I'm going to mix this 
I think I'm just going to sprinkle pepper on the top of each one, salt and pepper again, because my one hand is really gross here. Mix them up and then divide them into whatever size burgers you want. All right, you can see I made three. These are big burgers. These are bigger than my hand for dinner tonight because, you know, they wanted something special and they wanted a hamburger. So I'm going to save that burger for later, this piece for later in the week. And the other three, I like to refrigerate them for a little bit, let everything set up and kind of meld together. I have my potato salad in the refrigerator getting cooled off, and I have about an hour before I want to cook dinner. All right, our dinner is completed. I made my burgers, the potato salad, and I remember I said I have lettuce, and I have some leftover um, raspberry vinaigrette. I had a quarter of the little Roma tomato left, so I sliced it super thin, put it on my burger, and just a little bit on my salad. I really hope you enjoyed day eight. And if you have any comments or questions, let me know below. And please give me a thumbs up. It really does help get people to find my videos. I appreciate you all. Have a wonderful night.